What's up, guys? It's me again, Mike Wiseman, coming at you with another episode of Donuts and Diesels. Dead Rear. That's what all the haters call it. Yeah, I've called it that before as well. I just got a comment on one of my videos that compared Red Deer to a trailer park. Today's episode is going to be all about Red Deer, the cons and the perceived drawbacks of living here. So let's get into it. Media Perception Red Deer gets a pretty bad rap when it comes to media coverage. The first thing that comes to mind is those ridiculous McLean's Magazine articles that consistently rank Red Deer as one of the most dangerous places in Canada. In 2021 we ranked 3rd, 10th in 2019 and 6th in 2018. But this is the same magazine that ranked Edmonton as the fifth best city to live in, which is far more dangerous when it comes to violent crime. They have Brooks, Alberta as the ninth best city in Canada to live in. Brooks, Alberta. Canmore was 149th, so take McLean's opinion for what it's worth. Literally nothing. Now don't get me wrong, we get roasted quite a bit and sometimes that's fair. But for the most part, Red Deer is pretty chill. Sure, we get some bad press, but that's what sells, and every city gets their fair share of it. Sylvan Lake in the summer. One thing that Alberta does have limited accessibility to is good lakes in the summer. And as such, you get what happens every year in Sylvan Lake. It's an absolute madhouse at the main beach in the summer. Luckily, for those in the know, there are solutions. There's Pine Lake, Gull Lake, Buffalo Lake, and even Crimson or Pigeon Lake all offer alternatives to Sylvan. And they're all within an hour of Red Deer. Don't forget we also have the Red Deer River, which is awesome for floating in the summers. Just make sure to avoid the spring melt when the river is at high flow and always wear your life jackets. Or at least bring them along. The food scene. The food scene has always been a bone of contention for me and Red Deer. But over the past few years, we've had some pretty strong growth with local establishments, especially in the lunch and dinner world. For the longest time, we are pretty hurting when it comes to the breakfast scene. Calgary and Edmonton just have so many options for breakfast, while Red Deer just has decided that Glen's out of Gasoline Alley or Phil's downtown are simply good enough. Well guys, they aren't. There have been no good breakfast options up until recently. A great breakfast place up on the north end just opened called Hash. You have to go check it out, it has yet to disappoint us. Clothing stores. We've seen a lot of good chain clothing stores come and go over the years, and even when these stores were in town, the stock situation was always brutal. It was like they sent all the crap that they wouldn't sell in big cities to us. I'm looking at you winners. Now that's not to say that we don't have some little local gems for clothing stores, because we do. For us, a lot of time we still have to head to Edmonton or Calgary to places like Simon's or the livery shop to find clothes that fit our look. Public transportation. Now this one I don't have much experience with personally because if I can't drive for whatever reason I'll typically bike or walk, but word on the street is the transit system in town is not ideal. The routes aren't super direct and the accessibility information online is inconsistent or incomplete. We do have an incredible trail system that's connected and convenient, but it's not easily accessible in the winter, which might pose challenges for lower income individuals or people with mobility issues. Crime. We talked about this in the last video and in point number one, but Red Deer really does get a worse rap than it should for crime. There is a super low amount of violent crime in Red Deer and almost all of that type of crime is targeted. It's fairly rare for there to be a major incident that falls outside of the typical criminal activity circles in town, but there have been some pretty major incidents over the past year or two that did make the news and adds to that perception. If you look at the stats though, our rankings are pretty high due to typically three things. Petty crime, fraud, and you guessed it, driving under the influence. Long and short here, it's not likely something all you good law-abiding citizens need to get overly concerned about. Lack of support for diversity in the arts. Historically speaking, this has absolutely been the case. But again, as Red Deer grows and time ticks away, we are really starting to see a lot of great supports come available for individuals immigrating to the country or migrating within our community. Add to this some really great art initiatives that are bringing people downtown and creating beautiful landscapes within our community, and I think this concern will start to wean over the coming years. So that about wraps it up for our perspective on the drawbacks in Red Deer. If you guys think we missed something, hit us up in the comments below. We'd love to hear your perspectives on what holds Red Deer back as a community. And remember, if you're looking to learn more about the housing market in Red Deer, I'm a licensed full-time real estate agent in town and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you catch our next episode. See you next time.